Hey guys, I'd like to introduce you to the new Tormach 8L lathe. This is the little brother to the Slant Pro 15L. I am a CNC lathe beginner, so I think we're both gonna be learning uh, along the way on this video. So let's get to it. So let's go over the spec sheet real quick. The machine footprint is 50 inches by 26 inches, and that means it's a little over four feet wide by two feet deep. The typical system weight is 838 pounds. The maximum swing over bed is eight inches and the maximum swing over carriage is four inches. The travels are four and a half inches in the X and 10 inches in the Z with the tailstock. The spindle is a 1.5 horsepower, 1.1 kilowatt, and it has two spindle speed ranges. The high belt is from 350 RPM to 5,000 and the low belt is 180 RPM to 2,500. There are two different ways to hold your work. The integrated 5C collet in the spindle, and it also comes with a three-jaw chuck that has a collet on it. One thing to note though, is the three-jaw chuck can only be used on the low belt from 180 RPM to 2500 RPM. The quick change tool post comes standard. There's a full enclosure standard. There's an optional machine stand you can get. Coolant is optional. If we can figure out a way to have some kind of bar puller and maybe a gang plate, I could see some pretty cool semi-automated little uh, operations going. But right now with the quick change tool posts and the way that you clamp the work, it's pretty quick and it makes for a really good prototyping machine. Not however something I'd want to do a run of 100, 200 parts on just because you're changing every tool by hand. The 8L does run Pathpilot. It's a very user-friendly design. It has uh, conversational programming, which I haven't got into because it looks complicated and honestly, I like jumping into Fusion and just doing everything in Fusion. It does feature rigid tapping, threading, and constant surface speed, which is pretty nice. Our 8L package came with the Deluxe Professional Lathe Tool Kit and OXA 3 8 Tool Holder Kit. We have a right hand chamfer tool, a left hand turning facing tool, a right hand turning facing tool, a boring bar, a straight groove parting tool. It also came with two drill chucks, 3 8 and I added a smaller Big Kaiser carbide boring bar just so I can bore the smaller holes a little bit easier. I also added on a thread tool and this tool I actually bought off of Amazon for about 30 bucks. Came with 10 inserts and it's been amazing. Uh, I've actually threaded a titanium M2 screw without a problem. And last but not least, my favorite tool, it's a Sandvik round groove tool and uh, it works really well with profiling as well and adaptive roughing in Fusion 360. I also spent a good amount of time setting up my Fusion tool library. The next thing we need to do is install the tools on the machine. The Tormach manual covers this pretty well, but I feel like there's a few things that it leaves out and there's a few different ways that I did things that made sense to me and they worked because I came out with good parts. So let's go over that real quick. The one thing I don't like is when they tell you to align the tool, they're having you align this bar but really, if you're using a boring bar or any kind of the drill chucks, I would rather align the holder back here because these tools on the front, it doesn't really matter if they're off a tiny bit, but if you have a drill chuck in here and it's off a few degrees, that's gonna matter. So what I do is I, I get an indicator on here and I sweep the back of that holder just because if that back of the holder is nice and straight, then this tool is probably parallel to that. And if this tool is parallel to that, then you take this holder out and put a drill chuck in there, it should be the same. They also don't tell you how to adjust your tool height. And I know there are a couple ways to do this because I researched, I don't know, for a few hours. I know there's a tool you can make to check your height. There's a method of using a steel rule. And that's what I originally did, but I didn't feel like it was that accurate. So I ended up making a small part to help me with this. I ended up machining a few spikes out of aluminum and I could take that spike and put it in the spindle and align my tools exactly on the tip of that. Let's go over the 5C collet spindle real quick. It's surprisingly easy to tighten and loosen and change your material out. With aluminum, I was able to just hand tighten the rear nut and it was fine. But for harder materials like steel, I would definitely recommend using the included wrench. This machine does have a high and low belt. With the 5C collet, I can just leave it in high belt and I've been able to cut pretty much anything up. If you want to use the three jaw chuck, you do have to use the low belt, however. For my first row part, I wanted it to be simple yet satisfying. So what I came up with was a small quarter 20 bolt out of aluminum with a Higby thread. 
and this would be my first time threading on a CNC lathe, so I was pretty excited. We started off with facing the part, and then we roughed it. You have to leave enough stock to where you can get a good enough cut on your finishing pass, and uh, the rule of thumb is leave at least half of your nose radius. So our nose radius is I think 15 thou on these inserts, so you leave at least 7 thou radial stock on your roughing, and you should be fine. So I finished. And then it came with a threading tool that I kind of had to play with a little bit. I did run quite a few passes. It's actually not that bad. Then I came in with a spring pass. Then for the Higby thread, I used the parting tool and blunt started the uh, thread. And if you don't know what a Higby thread is, we'll link below to John's video on the whole process. And he goes way more into depth. We then used that same tool to finish. And I came over and it deburred the threads for me. I was leaving just a little bit of a burr. So I just kind of skimmed the top and then I parted it. There you go. Actually easier than I thought. And then with the simulation, you know, you know everything is going to be fine. I've actually really enjoyed running the 8L, especially when you need round parts. I mean, this machine is small, easy to use and set up. Man, it runs prototypes fast. The flood coolant is also really nice. And I've uh, cut a wide variety of materials with pretty consistent results. The one thing I would like to add is if you ever bump it or take a little bit too big of a bite, double check the tram of the quick change tool post. Set up an indicator, sweep it real quick. Because I have found mine has moved around a couple times and it could just be some of the screws settling in, but it's cheap insurance, just go and, and sweep it. Also make sure to level it as well so you don't have any kind of coolant issues or puddling. And uh, as far as speeds and speeds, I'm still working on that. I'm still trying to understand exactly how to, you know, make this machine run perfect every time. Sometimes it's easier to do pecking while you're cutting, uh, even when roughing, to help you break the chip. And sometimes just when you get the long chips in the machine, it can fill up quickly. Well, it's a little bit harder to clean out. Hi folks. The other reason we really like the 8L is we've got a beautiful dual spindle Y-axis driven tool lathe. It works great. It also scares the crap out of me, especially on simple parts. There's a lot of things that we make around here, R&D, testing, internal fixturing, and we wanted a simple machine that anybody could run without the fear uh, of, of a major crash and the simplicity of this machine along with Pathpilot. And that's what I wanted Vince to do was build a workflow that anyone here can use. And the key to that is having a set of standardized turning tools that are matched by a set of Fusion 360 cam recipes or templates with that library. So we're working on that, we'll be sharing it. Uh, the next video that we're working on on this machine is showing off your basic materials, aluminum, brass, steel, and titanium, showing some more specific cutting recipes and tolerancing. Um, and that was my other big question is, is the machine accurate? Vince's had no problem getting to within, say, that one or two thousands as required, and we're not really focused on that yet. The other thing that I think is awesome is Vince was testing this piece of titanium out, and on the first try, successfully cut a beautiful M2 thread right there. So, as always, folks, hope you learned something, hope you enjoyed. Take care. See you soon.